Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie, and welcome to a Premier League opening weekend DFS soccer slate breakdown. It's been a while since my last video. I said I was going to make more on the Euros, but frankly, I've just burned out. I need a bit of a break, so when I've had that. I'm happy to get back into it for the Premier League season on this four-game slate. DraftKings has some nice contests out, and Let's talk about it. In terms of the teams playing and the odds, the big favorites are Arsenal and then Newcastle, minus 500 and minus 300. So both very lopsided matchups. Then we got Everton and Brighton, which is just dead even on the odds, and Forrest being a slight favorite over Bournemouth. Now, in terms of set pieces, a lot of teams will have changed over the summer. But I don't think that'll be the case for Arsenal. It should be Sokka and Declan Rice splitting still. They've both been very effective on set pieces. They've both been still taking over preseason. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. I think Sokka has. He hasn't played as much because of the Euros. But I assume that he takes with Rice. I'm almost certain of it, as a matter of fact. As for Wolves, I'm not 100%. But I think it'll probably be Sarabia. Potentially on everything, we might see maybe Rodrigo Gomez potentially take new signing there, or maybe Jao Gomez, but Sarabi will have some share, and you're really not expecting a ton of sets here, considering they're playing Arsenal. Arsenal could end up with like 80% possession here, would not surprise me at all. Wolves might not have a single corner. In terms of set pieces for Everton Brighton, now, McNeil will take if he's on. Another new signing they've got that is not in this projected lineup on sofa score is Jesper Lindstrom if he's in I expect him to split with McNeil and however if he's not in I think it probably is a McNeil monopoly so yeah Lindstrom that's guy to watch out for if he's playing or not and that'll affect Everton set pieces massively now for Brighton should be Varco Monopoly. Maybe Milner splits, but I'd be a little bit surprised about that. Beltman will take something I'm pretty sure about. Another guy who potentially might take, who they just signed, is Ikubo Minte. He had like a really nice preseason. Everyone's super excited about him. Left-footed, so he'd eat into Barco's share of sets if he was to take. I don't think he will. But he's just a super talented player just to kind of see if he's in. I think he's got a pretty reasonable price on DraftKings, so I like him a lot if he starts. Brighton has so many new attackers. Now they're supposed to be in for Ruder, too, from, from Leeds. Like so, so they, they could see a lot of different combinations in terms of this front line here on them. And even at wing back, they could move some stuff around to play, like Mitoma there or Minte there or... All kinds of stuff. Estupinian, I think, is in, is back in training, too. But Barco should be the starter. And he's in a great spot because of that. Newcastle. It's interesting that Keir Trippier isn't in projected on Silver Score. I don't love them for projected lineups, usually. So I take anything we see here with a, a large grain of salt, frankly. If it was foot mob lineups, I'd, I'd be a little bit more concerned that Trippier isn't in projected. But because of Sofa... I think Trippier probably ends up playing. He played last friendly, so I think he's pretty much good to go. I think I know he's had a little bit of a knock that he's been dealing with, but I think he'll probably end up starting here. And if he's in, he should take the lion's share of set pieces. Without him, it gets a little bit more murky. We've seen Murphy take. We've seen Gordon take. We've seen Bruno Gimaraish take. None of them would surprise me. Even Hall, too, throw in there. So they're a bit of a mess without Trippier, so I really hope he's in. Otherwise, just who knows what they do. Like last preseason game, I think Gimar Reich took one. I think Jacob Murphy took one. Just It's just a mess for them. Southampton. Newcomers. Should be Sugawara. New signing. He took like everything for Azad Alkman. He takes a lot of set pieces for Japan too. So he should be the guy who's on set pieces. There's a small chance that Smallbone takes. He was their set-piece taker last season for Southampton in the championship, but I've seen Sugawara take in the friendlies leading up to the start of the season with both of them on. Now, the guy who I could see in, he'd probably split if he's in, is Ryan Manning. It was a him and Smallbone split for Southampton usually when they were both on. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they don't start him here in favor of like a Jack Stevens just because they're playing Newcastle. They're I, I, I they would probably expect to not have a ton of the ball and definitely need some more defensive solidity because of that. So I I, I agree that Manning probably doesn't end up playing, which would lead to more Sugo Arsons. Nottingham Forest to Bournemouth. Now, set pieces for Nottingham Forest under Nuno have just been a complete mess. It used to be a Gibbs-White monopoly. Then he split with Toffolo or whoever was starting at left back for a little bit. Now, I don't think he takes a thing. If it's this lineup, I think it'll be Alanga and Danilo. But it could be hudson Adoy. I'm pretty sure last friendly game that Forrest played with this kind of lineup, it was Alanga and Danilo splitting. So that's what I just expect again. Although we know that Esprito could change just at any time. Now, another name who's not in here, who's going to go under the radar, and I don't think people will do their due diligence and watch the tons of Nottingham Forest preseason highlights like I did to kind of get an idea what they might do is Elliot Anderson. He was kind of traded for and part of that weird swap deal with Newcastle where they got Vlachadimos all just to balance the financial fair playbooks. But he was really good, Elliot Anderson, on set pieces on Forest's last game of their preseason. It was against uh, Olympiacos. I think they won like 4 0. Like every goal, if you watch back the highlights, was from an Anderson set piece in one way or another, whether it be like a flicked on corner or a direct free kick off the post and then someone putting in the rebound. I think one was too. But Elliot Anderson was phenomenal from set pieces last game. And if he's in, I think he could potentially even have Monopoly. If not, maybe a split with Danilo. But I'd be shocked if they don't have him on set pieces if he's in and starting. So, yeah, Elliot Anderson, I think, is going to be a super sneaky GPP play, potentially even cash for this if he's in. But, yeah, like we see in projected here, no no Elliot Anderson, not 100% sure to start by any means, but just a guy to watch out for, I feel like. For Bournemouth in this lineup, I think it'll be a Cook and Christie split. Tavernier just has kind of lost his set pieces. So now it's – and they, they, they do do an in-swinger set routine. So Cook is kind of a lock for those right-footed in-swingers, and Christie should be the guy on the left-footed in-swingers. Okay, now let's go into pricing here. Bukayo Saka, most expensive player on the slate and more than likely than not for cash, especially first man in. So Saka, love him. Anthony Gordon – I think he's a great play too. Really lit it up last season. Just phenomenal. He gets 90 like every game almost. Just a ton of solid floor. Especially if we see no Trippier starting, which should, or potentially I should say rather than should, since just it'll be hard to tell for sure. But Gordon potentially has sets if there's no Trippier. He's another great play. I think it'd be a super popular route of going Gordon Saka as the two forwards in cash, even if Trippier's in, just because of how good he's been. Ishak, I think he's a great play here. It's hard to fit in cash just because Saka and Gordon are right there for similar prices, and you avoid that chance of a potential three or seven that Ishak might drop if he doesn't get a goal contribution, but he's probably got the high ceiling on the slate. Like, I'll have a ton of Ishak in GPP, but just a little bit hard to get there in cash games, considering we've got these high floor, decent ceiling forwards in a similar price range to him. But I think he's still a great play. Kai Havertz, he's a little bit much for me. I just don't think he's that effective as a striker. He was pretty good at the end of last season, but Arsenal have just no really injuries to any of the attackers, which means that it's a bit of a minutes roulette wheel. Because you've got Trussard, you've got Gabriel Jesus, like all these guys who could rotate in for minutes. And Havertz could be one of the guys who ends up getting sub because of that. They could also end up subbing like Party or something and moving Rice back. But it's just another factor. And he's super expensive. Like he's not been this much, like ever. I don't know why he's really this expensive. And I don't love him because of that. But he might end up being low owned in GPP because of that. So. I guess you could maybe make an argument there. Just I just don't like that spot 
particularly. Martinelli, he used to have sets like at one point, beginning of the season. Now it's Rice who's been very effective on them, so you understand why he's lost them. Now it's just become another kind of Arsenal roulette attacker. Same with Averts, same with Trossard if he's in. I just think that the Arsenal guys are a little expensive, personally, considering that at least a couple of them probably go 60 minutes, which scares me a little bit. So for cash, don't love it. For GBP, I can get behind it. Arsenal could end up smashing Wolves like 5-0 to zero or something. They've shown us in the past that they kind of have no mercy. When they're dominating teams, they're not afraid to continue to put on the pressure and put up four or five goals past. So a little Arsenal stack in GBP definitely could work. But yeah, like I said in cash, Saka and Gordon are just the two payoffs I think people will go to, likely. Jesus, 9100, another Arsenal roulette piece, and just not a ton to add about him compared to any of the other guys. Now, Morgan Gibbs White, I could see him being popular just because people just plug him assuming he takes set pieces, despite Forrest kind of changing what they do. He didn't take really down this whole stretch. He's still putting up decent points. So there is a bit of an argument there. But for knowing he's almost 100% guaranteed to be setless and on a slate with Newcastle and Arsenal in really favorable positions, I tend to advocate for a Gibbs White fade in cash. GPP, I think he's a decent play. He's fourth best player, but you're hoping for goal contributions now. He's not really as much of a floor guy. Joe Pedro, don't love it. GPP I might have like 5% or something. It's just sprinkle, but don't love him. McNeil. If there's no Lindstrom, I think McNeil becomes very, very tempting. Brighton have a new manager now. It's not Deserby anymore, so I don't think they'll have like their 60% possession games that they used to have. They might never know, but even then, McNeil has just usually finds a way to get points. In a Monopoly lineup, I think he could be in a really good spot. And I think he's tempting even as an option in cash. The way I'm kind of looking at it is I might end up going him over Gordon if Trippier ends up starting. So Sokka would be like my first forward for sure. And then I'd be a little bit more kind of humming and hawing between like Gordon and McNeil right now in terms of who I'd run in the forward slots in cash. Everyone else is kind of whatever. DCL for GPP. Elanga. Now, if there's no Elliot Anderson, I'm pretty sure Elanga will end up with set pieces. He didn't really take it all last season, but he's been taking in these friendlies leading up, which makes me think that they kind of like him there. He took over Callum hudson Adoy, interestingly enough, who was kind of the set piece taker last season. But Alanga's cheaper than Hudson Adoy is, and I like him as a player. And he can, he's another guy who I could be tempted to go in cash, but once again, lineup dependent. And, but like at 6600, that's not bad. And if you want to go to the route of kind of saving a little bit more money in your forward slots, I think Alanga could be a great way to go. Now, some kind of whatever on like any of these guys can be viable in GBP. Like Chris Wood, I think, is a great GBP play. Minta, I think, could be popular. Brighton are a good team. If he starts, he'll probably be on that right wing, I assume, cutting in, shooting. Has had a ton of goal contributions in preseason. I don't think he's a bad little budget forward either. Everyone else can kind of whatever on. Like Maupai, if he starts, sure. And CISO's good value. Smallbone. If there's no Sugawara, I think there's a world where Smallbone an all right play 4500 that's good value potentially monopoly with no sugawara so i don't mind that too as an absolute punt everyone else some kind of whatever man. he dozy i don't think it's awful it's for stone min almost but like i said i'm likely hanging up or going to that 5k range is a couple of interesting plays midfielders in terms of strictly mids odegaard's the most expensive one He's a pretty good play. Another Arsenal left piece. He doesn't get as subbed as much as some of the other Arsenal attackers. He's kind of the guy that always goes 90 minutes. 
like almost every single game it's 90 minutes sometimes we get sub like with a minute to the game ending but that's a good thing about Odegar. maybe he doesn't have quite the same upside as some of the other plays but he's just safe for minutes and another way to get exposure to Arsenal, which is not that bad. I don't mind an Odegaard here. It's just hard to get there if you're paying up at forward, like I'm kind of advocating for. Bassard, that's pretty cheap at 7,500. I think that's a good way to get some exposure to Arsenal if he's in. So I like that. Jacob Murphy for 8K. I think he might be the most likely set piece taker if there's no trippier. And he's just a guy who's super DFS friendly, crosses a ton, gets a ton of points. He's only goes 60 minutes usually, but he's just been getting solid numbers in that time. If you take a 10 to 15 here, for sure, the potential of getting a goal contribution suddenly you're at 25 points potentially. Like I, I like Jacob Murphy a lot. And even with Trippier, he's still a super DFS friendly kind of player. And I could see myself going there and maybe going to a slightly cheaper forward to fit him for sure. Declan Rice, I think he's a little bit expensive. He's like the 5 to 6K range. I'd love him as a play. It's 7,300. It's probably fair, but like I just don't really think he's got the upside of some of these guys in his price range. Even though he potentially can do it, like I'll still have a share in GPP, but just for cash. I kind of want something with a little bit more bang for that expensive or more likely to produce that bang rather since Rice can get those numbers just doesn't happen that often. And he can definitely get like a six. He's pretty set piece reliant. Now there's my guy, Elliot Anderson. I love him here, frankly, if he starts like I likely end up playing cash, even if I'm the only guy with him. But 5900 is a fair price, potentially Monopoly set taker. People will not know about him, so he's great in GPP. And just because of his role is so enticing, I, I could definitely see myself getting there in cash. And 5900 is not really bank-breaking, especially considering the matchup. Like, I, I, I like Elliot Anderson a lot. Tavernier, he's not going to be owned in GPP. Just I don't really like him without sets, but... Maybe have a little bit of exposure to him. His minutes aren't that great. You're really hoping for a goal contribution there. So that's what my thoughts on him. It didn't I don't think plays, but like he's not bad. Sarabi, I think he's just a tough matchup. Lindstrom. I like Lindstrom a lot if he's in. 5,400. Should have a share of set pieces. Brighton is a pretty tough matchup. And he's a guy who probably does not go 90. But for 5K, I could see myself getting there. Same with me, Toma. GPP likely, though, for him. Now, Jack Harrison at 5K. I think that's a solid play. He usually goes 90. Got a decent floor on him. I think that's a good play, too. Nicky Elmeron, if he starts, is a good value forward. But with how much transfer speculation has been around him, I just don't think they'll start him. Christie. I like Christie a lot, 4,500. Share set pieces. And another guy who just finds a way to get points. He doesn't do it in the most conventional way for DFS, which is usually when you think of like crossing and mostly crossing, <laughs> taking set pieces, which he does, but he doesn't get a ton of crosses usually, but he just finds a way to get to an eight. We get a few shots, a few tackles, a few key passes, and suddenly he's at eight points, and for 4,500, you take that. He didn't have set pieces for a lot of those games where he got to eight either, so... Definitely can get way above that as well. So I like Christy a lot. I think he's super cash friendly and a super nice play in all formats. In terms of way down there, Danilo, I don't think that's awful. I think he likely ends up with a share, especially if there's no Elliot Anderson. Not a ton of upside there, but 4K set pieces is hard to say no to. Philip Billing, I think, could be – Philip Billing and Ducor, I think, could be decent GPP plays. Ducore plays pretty high forward for Everton, almost as like a second forward. No floor there or anything. Oh, geez. <laughs> I'm stuck. No floor there or anything, but definitely can pitch in with a goal or two at times. So, GPP, definitely like him. Even in cash, it might be worth just going for a flyer just because he's that cheap. 
Manning, I could see myself getting there too. He's a left back, so he's mispositioned. But for thirty eight hundred with set pieces, that's not bad. Milner, he's pretty position dependent for me since he can kind of play anywhere, like as a wing back or center mid, defensive mid. I don't think he's awful. But another guy I'm a little bit hesitant on just because of minutes and upside. That's so all I'd really consider playing there. In terms of defenders, now this is where I think a lot of my core plays come in. Because Trippier, if he starts first man in, him and Sokka first man in kind of jointly. But 1500 is underpriced for Trippier. Like we saw him get way up there at times last season. Like 7K, 8K, we saw him. This is the cheapest he's been in a good while. He wasn't as hot. He, 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 like, he was 9,700 in one game. That's insane to see. He delivered, too. But yeah, Kieran Trippier, just a DFS god. He has a ton of crosses, takes everything usually. Kieran Trippier, just a great play for 5,900. Now, the other guy that I'm loving to play here. Valentin Barco. Pascal Gross is gone. That just opens the road for so many more chances for Barco to be on set pieces. It was a Gross-Barco split, usually when they were both on, but without Gross, he should potentially have no competition on set pieces. Like, he probably has Monopoly. Worst case, he splits with him. I guess worst case, Mintic tick or something could get out for him. But I'm pretty sure Barco will split at the minimum. He's just a guy who crosses a ton. They play him at wing back, so he gets super far forward. Barco, just great, great play here. I think he could be the next trip year, next from Alexander Arnold. And just super eye on him as a youngster, I am. Because those two are in such great spots, it makes it hard for me to really care about too many of the other defenders. The Arsenal guys I could get behind just because. Arsenal just pummel teams usually, and they can definitely get a goal contribution or two. Like Ben White can definitely, like four goals, four assists last, last season. I might have a couple of him and GPP, but for cash, I'm almost certainly going Barco and Trippier if they're both in. But yeah, Arsenal guys have talked about a little bit. The center backs always are not bad to go. They're a little expensive here, but they're just super solid off of Arsenal set Arsenal set pieces. So I could see myself having a share of them in GPP too. Sugawara I like too. He should have set pieces if in. I would, I would like him a little bit cheaper considering the matchup, but I, I don't mind him at all. But like I said, I'm going Barco and Chippier in cash for sure. And they'll be my two most, they might even be my two most owned guys in general. Sock will be up there too in GPP. Like I'll, I, I could definitely see myself having upwards of like 75% of all three of those guys in cash. Yeah, like I said, because because of how good of a spot those set piece guys are in, I don't love kind of the rest of the defenders. Kirk has a thirty two hundred. I can get behind though. Like if I'm not going for those big name guys, I'm probably punting. Michael King, I don't think is bad. Whatever these twenty five hundred center backs start. Like I always say, pair him with a set piece taker, hope for a goal. Not a bad way to go about it in GPP. Goalie. Complete crapshoot, as always. Both teams to score, I think, is super. Is like, what, not that high on Arsenal? It's like minus 150, I want to say. Yeah, minus 150, which kind of makes the argument to play like a Raya. I never mind just punting goalkeeper, hoping like a 10 to save. Like, Jose Sock would definitely make like eight saves or something. He's a save goalkeeper, like to coin the term. He did super well last game of the season. Faces a lot of action, usually, and at that price, you're just happy with whatever you can get, really. You're kind of playing him to afford attackers rather than kind of caring that much how he does. Anything he does is just a bonus. That's when we look at goalkeeper. Or you can pay up. Hope Ryan makes like three saves. Clean sheet wins, suddenly on 16 points. But yeah, you can really get, get away with any of these guys. It just depends how it goes. Depends how well goalkeepers are playing. Like There's such a thin margin between goalkeepers dropping negative points and 25. Right, in terms of my core, I kind of already given it away, frankly, just in going down the list of players. 
Trippier, Barco, Saka. Simple as that. All right. Last thing to do. Last, last thing to last thing to say here while we finish up. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube. Check out the FSI website where I will be covering every soccer slate through the Discord, which you can access through the website, like I mentioned. And yeah, guys, I'm looking forward to being back to making videos. I should have one for next weekend's Premier League slate. And UCL will be back in action too. So yeah, guys, it should be fun. And I'll see you later. Bye.